Welcome back to the final part of today's webinar looking at 2D eye movements in BPPV. So, so far we've introduced ourselves to the concept of looking at torsional eye movement uh, in relation to examining uh, the behavior of nystagmus when we do positional or positioning movements. We've had from Dr. Petrak some fantastic case studies that really just take the tip of the iceberg of the sorts of investigations that we can then uh, consider a little bit more when we're, we're really objectively looking at eye movements. And to conclude this webinar, what we're going to now do is just spend a few moments looking at the third objective we set at the very beginning of this webinar, uh, examining the benefits of pairing these 3D torsional eye movements with the TRV chair or the repositioning chair uh, for positioning and positional uh, examination. So let's just take a bit of a deeper dive. When we look at BPPV, we've considered uh, Dix Hall Pike that we spoke about earlier and the side lying test by Alan Simont. And we know that uh, generally it's considered that we can easily examine, diagnose and uh, treat BPPV, uh, certainly within a, a normal standard clinical room. So why would we be then thinking about repositioning chairs? Well, for those of us that do regular examinations of patients with uh, uh, suspected BPPV. We know that in our older populations, we're certainly coming across heavier patients with dizziness across that whole spectrum of dizziness uh, disorders. We see anxiety being quite high, and that's not unusual in patients that are experiencing these very violent and disturbing uh, sensations of dizziness. Once again, going back to our older population, we know that as we age, well, we become a little bit more frail. And certainly doing some of the examinations of moving people around on a couch to both get into the provoking position, the Dick's Hall Pike position or the sidelining position, is uh, sometimes quite problematic. But then actually carrying that on into then treatment, if we do identify BPPV, can also be quite difficult. And that really comes with those patients that uh, may also have limited mobility. So certainly age is not a kind uh, carer for us. We do end up sometimes having joint issues, hip issues, uh, pain in the spine. And that certainly then could maybe create a barrier for us in terms of being able to carry out successful treatment. And the consequence of that, um, you know, we, we've certainly examined in the past in that Dizziness and unsteadiness is, is a limiting factor for activities of daily living and independence as we age. So let's look at some of the features then on the, on the TRV chair, uh, the BPPV in positional positioning uh, chair. So we've got a head mount, we've got some side pads there, we've got a secure four-point harness and a leg strap. And really what these are allowing us then to do is to not only examine uh, in a little bit more of an objective uh, and controlled manner but take into account patients that are but take into account patients that are both frail and potentially anxious in that the uh, additional security of being in somewhere where they feel safe can certainly uh, facilitate better treatment thinking more now of uh, the heavier patients or patients that are a little bit more difficult to manipulate into position we've got a high weight limit uh, and a counterweight system to really protect us from uh, any strain on the actual examiner in may maybe being able to move the patient in the correct position. But more importantly, when we look at the TRV chair, um, uh, particularly under video nystagmography, what we can see coupling that with the torsional eye movement algorithm, not only are we now observing those eye movements and uh, objectively assessing them uh, from a visual perspective, we can objectively look at these counterclockwise, clockwise eye movements throughout the treatment of BPPV, both in the identification provoking position, but also undertaking the actual treatment and looking how the eye can move. So we're moving beyond just looking at horizontal and vertical movement, but incorporating this additional torsional uh, movement, which when we're looking at conditions such as BPPV particularly, but also any others that may mimic BPPV and create torsional eye movements, as, as Michelle illustrated in her case studies, you know, looking for those red flag central conditions that really require uh, a much more immediate management strategy than uh, undertaking repositioning. That this really, uh, these biaxial chairs facilitate that consistency. So then looking at that from a treatment perspective, uh, whether we're undertaking a 
Epley manoeuvre or a Lempert roll, uh, whatever the uh, position may be. So what the TRV uh, biaxial chair, by axial we mean moving around more than one axis, that allows us as a clinician to facilitate a consistency of speed, angle and amplitude. And certainly uh, in less experienced clinicians or people who are more recently entering into looking at these disorders, that technique uh, does come with time. So having something that takes the burden off the clinician can uh, obviously be welcomed into clinic. More importantly, the diagnostic manoeuvres are what we're using to separate out those that can be treated for conditions uh, such as BPPV from those that have red flags for central positional dizziness and torsional eye movement. And that addition of having the torsional algorithm uh, allows us to examine much more care both the velocity of the uh, torsional eye movement uh, but also being able to look at that in the time base and looking at latency uh, and certainly behaviour as we move through different positions. Uh, the final thing really to consider with TRV and, and those of you that have had the opportunity to look at the uh, webinars uh, on TRV on the um, on the Interacoustics Academy website will be familiar with the term of using um, kinetic energy to facilitate some of the smaller order cornea particles that sit within the semicircular canals to allow them to really move out of uh, the, the affected canal and lower the burden then of any residual or, or reoccurrence of BPPV. If you haven't had an opportunity to look at those, then um, then I would strongly recommend that uh, when you have time, you can take a moment to look in a little bit more detail. And that now really brings us to a close of today's webinar. Uh, so we're ready now for some more additional uh, questions and answers. And by all means, if you feel that this has whetted your appetite to really maybe take a more deeper dive into the benign paroxysmal positioning of vertigo uh, as a pathophysiology, then please let us know in the questions and answers and we'll do our best in 2021 to do a more uh, uh, in-depth looking at that particular disorder uh, from a, a fundamental perspective. Again, thank you for taking the time to join us today. All the very best.